is Sky Sports. Ladies and gentlemen, in the green corner, in the yellow corner, boxing on Sky Sports in association with StandsPoker.com. Young Muttley, his career has suddenly taken off. The British welterweight champion at the age of 30. Kevin Anderson has made his mark much sooner. Commonwealth title holder at just 23. On ringside, live, a two title showdown. British champion against Commonwealth champion at welterweight. It's Young Muttley against Kevin Anderson. And these two put it all on the line in a long overdue big title showdown for the city of Birmingham. Robert McCracken is with us tonight. Robert was recently Birmingham's biggest star in the ring, now one of our brightest young trainers, of course. And we also look ahead to this, live from Sky Sports, a fight the whole world is waiting for. Diego Corrales and Jose Luis Castillo meeting for the third time. A rivalry that is already one for the ages. Oh, left hook! Castillo looks out on his feet! He beats Dart! Unbelievable! Here we go again. Oh, he's a with a right hand! Oh, he's another one! Got him down with a left hand! He's knocked out! Castillo has his revenge! Oh, and so on Sky Sports to the third meeting early on Sunday. Corrales against Castillo is live from 2 a.m. on Sky Sports 1, and there are replays at 7.30 in the morning on 1, and again at 10.30 Sunday morning on Sky Sports 2. We can hardly wait, and Adam Smith is standing by. Las Vegas, the larger-than-life city, a 24-hour entertainment mecca. What better setting, then, for two of boxing's non-stop gladiators to meet in their rubber match? Yep. Jose Luis Castillo and Diego Corrales have rolled back into the desert for a final encounter this weekend. It'll be about machismo, pride, desire and sheer will to win and we hope for another thriller. It's bound to be a great night, more on that later, but we're in for something special here in Birmingham tonight as well with Muttley facing off against Anderson in our top of the bill. And it's all about time that it happened again for your city, Robert, isn't it, Birmingham? Yeah, it's been asleep for a long time now. I think it's been a good 10 years since I was operating around these parts, but um, it's great to have a big fight back in the city. Great to have you with us tonight. At the weigh-in for our top of the bill, Anderson was first on the scales, younger, fresher perhaps, and unbeaten. Ten stone and six pounds. He, the Commonwealth champion, and then the new British champion, Muttley, doing light well to remember, only a year or so ago. Ten stone, six pounds, two ounces. Doing it nicely. How did they look to you, Robert? First impressions, Muttley, Muttley's made the weight really easy. He's the new champion. He's, um, he's fully motivated. Anderson looked like he worked a little bit harder, but I think he'll be the bigger man in the ring on the night. And isn't it exciting that they're both prepared to come here with their titles and lay it all on the line? Yeah, it's tremendous, really, because neither of them from Birmingham. Um, it's a big fight. Whoever wins will go on to the next stage, and um, it's going to be great. Thank you very much for the moment, Robert. First up live here in Birmingham, we're all set with Matthew Macklin. Could call this a homecoming for young Macklin. A man knocking loudly on the door for a British title shot at light middleweight. His first pro appearance here comes against Marcin Piatkowski from Poland. We're just across from Villa Park here tonight for our action at the Aston Villa Leisure Centre. Haven't been too many thrillers at the Villa in recent years. This could be quite a night, though. Commentary team all set, Ian Dark and Jim Watt. Our MC, John MacDonald. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to the Aston Villa Event Centre. Barry Hearn for Matram Sport in association with EJKO Promotions. Proudly present a night of championship boxing. Sponsored by Broadway and Shaftesbury Casino Group. And a very warm welcome to our viewers joining us live here on Sky Sports. It's Ringside Live. All the officials have been appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control. 
and the Commonwealth Council here present with us at ringside. Let's get the action underway, sports fans. We are in the light middleweight division. Eight rounds of boxing. Introducing to you firstly, he's fighting out of the red corner wearing the gold trunks, weighed in at 11 stone, three pounds. Bringing a 26 fight record, 18 wins, five inside. The scheduled distance, six losses and two draws. He's from Poland. Please welcome Marcin Piatkowski. And across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the green trunks, trimmed with silver. Weighing in at 11 stone, two pounds, nine ounces. With a 17 fight record, 16 wins, 12 inside. The scheduled distance and just one defeat. He is the reigning light middleweight champion of all Ireland. Ladies and gentlemen from Birmingham, please welcome Matthew Macklin. Mr. Terry O'Connor, and this is eight three minute rounds. Here we go, lads, to talk to the shining room, protect yourself at all times, best luck to both. Here we go. Well, Macklin's been a star in waiting for rather too long four and a half years. This is the first time that he's ever fought in his home city of Birmingham as a professional boxer, so a big night for him. He sold plenty of tickets, massive support for him, and will expect to win here. Ricky Hatton's chief sparring partner from the Billy Graham Phoenix Camp 2 in the green trucks here with the pole. Marcin Piatkowski is a durable type who went the distance with one of Britain's top middleweights, Richard Williams, at Dagenham in February. So Macklin would do pretty well to stop him. Macklin is 24 now, he's only lost once in 17 contests. That was in an English title fight with the much more experienced Andrew Facey. He's gone away, he's learned from that. He's had a few trainers and promoters in his time. They're looking to launch him both sides of the Atlantic. He's got an Irish background, so he could appeal too and has done already to the Irish-American contingent on the east coast of America. Busy early on here, Macklin. I think he looks very, very, very powerful with these shots. He hasn't really unloaded yet, but you can see how heavy-handed he is. These are not even four-blooded shots. I think he just wants to keep Piotrkowski on the end of the, the, the jabs, have a look at him in the opening round. We know this guy's tough. Uh, Macklin should be able to outbox him and control things, but uh, can't run out of steam, which I don't expect him to do. And can't obviously disrespect him because the guy did uh, have a couple of tough rounds with Richard Williams. He was stopped last time out, mind you, Piatkowski, in six rounds by Attila Kovac in Hungary in April. Busy on the slide a bit. Macklin starting impressively, looking so much bigger. He actually, officially, is weighing a pound less, but you'd never believe it to look at them in there. I think Macklin realises some time has been wasted, you know, through uh, changing gymnasiums, hand injuries, so I think he's in a hurry. To, to, to get his career rolling the, in the, the proper direction and he really looks in a hurry tonight as soon as the bell sounded he was right out across the ring uh, Pietkowski just can't get a chance to get any punches off here feeling the weight of these shots as well just starting to look a bit marked up already tries to fire back with body shots but Macklin is all business at the moment he had a first round win on a Ricky Hatton bill back in November the night Hatton beat Carlos Massa that's the only time we have seen him in Britain in the last couple of years. Good body shots, though, from the pole there. Macklin drives a right hand through the middle. He's very anxious to get his career moving at this point. The pole looking for the body shots into the ribcage all the time. But he is getting marked up around the face already, Piatkowski. He's got a little nick on the cheek. Yeah, but just a couple of little reminders that he's not here just to make up the numbers. Big round. But Macklin, an impressive start. The punches are good, they're solid, well delivered. But uh, Yukowski just now and again, reminding us he can fight a little bit. Macklin's round though in a pretty big way. 
Matthew Macklin, local hero with the Ricky Hatton team there in the corner. Billy Graham, Kerry Kay is the conditioner, Mick Williamson, the cut man, and new manager, Brian Peters, who's working hard to engineer some opportunities for Macklin. Did well in that first round, didn't he? Yeah, he did very well. Uh, no complaints at all. The only slight complaint, maybe he, he did twice the work that was required to win the round. I mean, he well won, he could have won that with half the punches. And if this guy's a steer, then obviously you don't want to be wasting energy, you don't want to be running out of steam. So if you can win a, a round with uh, 50 punches, don't do it with 100. Green trunks, Matthew Macklin. Who's warming up, by the way, for a shot at the British Light Middleweight Championship held by Jamie Moore. That fight's already been postponed once. They're hoping to get it on next month, as early as that. Just walked onto one there. Now, he has to be a little bit careful. Digs in the right to the ribs. Just has to be a little bit careful. Although he's dominating the action, he's not quite uh, dominating Piakowski yet. I mean, he's catching a lot of these punches. That was a good left hook. And he's able to come back with solid counters there, Macklin. Took a couple of those there. Three quarters of Macklin's victims so far have been stopped. That's another good right hand to the body from him. He looks physically dominant in there, and he's throwing plenty of leather all the time. A charismatic character he could take off as a headline name if he can get it right in the next year or two. But we've been saying that for a while, to be fair. Yeah, but this is definitely as good as I've seen Macklin. I think he's in the gym now, he's happy in. I think he's content with the, the way things are going, and he really does look powerful in there. Powerful and businesslike. Another right to the body. Macklin, who was in Boston with Ricky Hatton in the build up to his fight with Luis Calazzo recently, didn't spar with Hatton for that fight. But he has for plenty in the past. It's another body shot, mixing it up, head and body. Good repertoire from Macklin, who was a dazzling amateur. Yeah, but he's really imposed himself on Piotrkowski right straight away. Just, uh, has to think down again. Piotrkowski comes back with some kind of nice little uppercut inside. He is capable of coming out of that uh, crab-like defence with some jolting little shots. It's just a little bit more care, but really boxing well. Piotrkowski looking to tough it out, being heavily outworked there in the moment. Macklin wants to put on a, a real statement of his talent for his Birmingham fans here. They want to put him on here again, start a real local base, get the Midland scene really revving up again. It's been dead too long. Another big round. Macklin, maybe not just finding the target to the head as cleanly as he would like, but this guy does have a good defence. That's why my only worry at this stage is running out of steam. He's putting out a lot of work in the opening two rounds. Okay, Macklin pockets the round. So long, you know, George. Yes, working on a few technical things in the corner with Matthew Macklin, who, by the way, in the past, to improve his rhythm and footwork, has studied old videos of Joe Lewis, the former world heavyweight champion in action. You couldn't do much better than that, could you? No, that's a fact. They're nice to know he's studying him, but then the body shots are really working well. But they're maybe just a little bit more clear defensively and settle down a little bit. Green trunks of Matthew Macklin, who's been eager here to impress busy 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 all the time Koski on almost a sawn off light middleweight completely different build stocky type I think eventually Macklin may have to invite this fella to come forward a little bit more often, maybe try and clip him as he's throwing punches, because he's just going into that crab-like defence. That was a lovely jab through the, through the middle, some more of that. It's not easy to find the, the target cleanly. Pretty negative, Pietkovsky not throwing much, just covering up in survival mode almost at the moment. Yeah, but still, the, now and again, that little sign of danger when he comes out of that crouch. <laughs> 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 
important from Macklin's point of view that he's nice and patient and picks his punches and finds his way in with educated pressure. Oh, yeah, he's stopping Pierre Cosby from working, so just settle down slightly. Only quite such a hot pace if you're not landing cleanly. He's been on the back burner for a long time, though, Macklin. You can see why he'd want to grab a televised opportunity to just re-advertise his claims and remind everybody why that people were talking about him in the first place. Well, I mean, he does have a bit of class about him. You can see the way he's moving around. OK, he's having things pretty much his own way at the moment, but you can just see the way he's going about his work, the quality punches, the way they're delivered, the variety of punches. <coughs> yeah, bright, bright future ahead. I mean, no real harm for him, really, losing that one fight he did lose against Andrew Face. He wasn't quite ready, and Face, he was on a little bit of a hot streak at the time, as I remember it. <coughs> Looks more rounded, not so much the boy fighter about him now. All those rounds with Ricky Hatton in the gym, he'll have learned plenty doing that. Good punches to the body, this is the Birmingham crowd getting behind Macklin. Looks a good fighter in there, doesn't he? Yeah, he looks classy, you can see the class. I mean, he's treating this like a workout at the moment, but uh, just doing as he pleases. No complaints whatsoever. He's not allowing Piotrowski to come back with the counter. He's just keeping him fully occupied every second. Not sure how many more of these wicked-looking body shots that Piotrowski can take without beginning to unravel a bit, but he's there at the moment, OK. Coming from Sky Sports next Wednesday, we have world heavyweight title action for you. It's Nikolai Valuev defending the WBA crown against Owen Beck. That's next Wednesday at 8, Sky Sports 1. Yep, chance to see the beast from the east, Valuev, in action. Back to this one tonight. So far, so good for Matthew Macklin in his first fight in his home city. Jamie Moore will be a keen watcher of this, the British champion, knowing that he's probably got to fight Macklin sometime soon. Another fight they're trying to line up for Macklin is against John Duddy, who a lot of people in America are talking about, an Irishman who's based in New York and selling loads of tickets. Big hot property over there. Fight between him and Macklin would be something over on the uh, east coast of the United States somewhere. But that's in the future. He's got to keep winning. Yeah, I think that's a fight they want to leave because the longer they leave it, the, the more money it'll generate. But that's a great match for the future if they both keep doing as they're doing. Macklin having things much his own way here. There will be a question, of course, when he stepped up in level again. Good body shots. I think I have to say he's probably doing a better job than uh, Richard Williams was doing. The gum shield has come out. Pietkowski. And he just winced as he walked across to his corner there, Pietkowski. Just starting to be busted up a little bit by Macklin's pressure. And I think the first body shot of the round troubled him. Yep, that, that's the same shot there, the right hand behind the elbow. These are hurting, winced again there. Is he ready to go? Macklin's got to keep on throwing the punches now and show a clinical finish. An uppercut there, knocked him back against the rope. Pietkowski escapes for the moment, but how much more of this can he take? Yeah, Macklin just looks so much more mature in the last year or so. He's already appeared in Atlantic City and Philadelphia, winning on both occasions inside three rounds, Macklin. Back home tonight, and the first place that he really has to make waves is here. Good right through the middle that time. Oh, that body shot, delayed action, left hook to the body, and he knocked everything out of Piotrowski for a moment. He needed a break. Eight, mandatory eight count. He looks at his corner, he doesn't really want to go on, and that was all the invitation Terry O'Connor needed. And Macklin in Birmingham, in front of his home fans, scores the stoppage when he wanted. 
inside four rounds, did a much better job on this pole than Richard Williams. And that was a fair old statement of what Matthew Macklin is about and means to be about in the next year or so. Yep, that was so impressive, everything he did, class, strength, maturity, the whole shooting match. Looks like a young man who's going to go all the way. Hope that the match with uh, Moore takes place because that's a tremendous domestic match. I mean, right at the start of the round, he, he, he took a body shot that troubled him, the, the first one. You can see a little stumble. He just moved to the side from that one, and you can see that one troubled him, yep. Just edging away there. And I think by this time, it wasn't going to take uh, too much to get him out of there. And he's not a man who's easily sickened, but you can see he was finding the space right behind the elbow, usually the right hand, but that for, the, for a change that it was the left hand, but how well delivered, how accurate, bang onto the rib cage, all over for the night. He'll have taken a few of those, wouldn't he, in the gym from Ricky Hatton in his time. They know about body punching in that gym. Yeah, well, it's done him no harm whatsoever. Keeping in mind, he, he, he finished it in the last fight in the first round with a single body shot, so he obviously he's learned about the body punching from Ricky, but he's learned it well. And I thought the referee got that right. I think Piotrkowski looked at the corner. He didn't really want any more. He pretended to protest, but it was all over in the fourth round, and that was impressive from the fast improving Matthew Macklin ladies and gentlemen timekeeper Brian Heath has recorded a time of two minutes and 17 seconds of the fourth round referee Terry O'Connor has stopped the contest Piatkowski in no position to continue your winner from Birmingham Matthew Macklin bless your appreciation please for our visitor from Poland Marcin Piatkowski. You could see him filling a big arena in Birmingham all by himself in years to come if Matthew Macklin can keep up the rate of progress. Good work from him tonight. And backstage, the man who Birmingham is firmly behind, he's West Bromwich is in the first place, Young Mutley. He is the British welterweight champion getting ready for definitely the biggest test of his career tonight and a long-awaited big fight for the city of Birmingham against Kevin Anderson with two titles at stake tonight. Let's hear from young, shall we call him Mr rather than Master Macklin from now on with Ed Robinson. Well, Matthew, was that the kind of performance you've been hoping for? Yeah, I really was. I mean, obviously you're always happy to get the knockout if you can, but I honestly was coming for eight rounds. Well, the video I was seeing of him was against Richard Williams. You know, I was at middleweight, Williams was a good operator. And so I wasn't really looking to put pressure on myself. I just wanted a clean, good boxing performance and uh, the knockout would have been a bonus, which it was. Were those body shots that Ricky Hatton would be proud of? I think they were, I think they were, they were very clean. I think Wayne McCullough would have been proud of the way he took them. Because yeah. there was a few of them cripplers and he sucked it up. He was one tough, tough opponent. But uh, I, knew, I knew if I kept the pressure up, you know, it wouldn't get too erratic and Punch was like that, so I was just touching him at times, and he was on the ropes. Uh, you know, I haven't boxed for six months, might have been a touch over eagerly. No, some doctor here, Billy, saying, get your feet there first, which I think I did that as the rounds evolved, and that's, that's why I was able to find the body shots as the third and fourth round went on. Was it important to you to make a statement in front of your own fans here in Birmingham? Yeah, definitely. Like I say, all I wanted was a clean performance. But I suppose, if I was totally honest, boxing in Birmingham for the first time as a pro, I was hoping for the knockout. You ready for Jamie Moore? Oh, I've been ready for about 18 months for Jamie Moore. I just hope he's ready for me. We look forward to that. Well done. Robert McCracken's with us tonight. Robert, we've been waiting some time for this young man, but at 24, is he ready to go at last? Yeah, I think they're ready to let him off the leash now. The uh, Jamie Moore fight's pending, and um, he's definitely ready for it. I know he's been through four, five trainers. You haven't had a go with him, but what <laughs> do you see about the raw material there? I think he's a tremendous body puncher. He always has been. Um, I just think he needs to get a little bit lighter on his feet and maybe, you know, he had things as he played, but maybe pick the pace up now and again, not stay one pace. That will happen, though, won't it, when he goes up in class? Oh, yeah, definitely. Do you think I, he'll be able to deal with that? I, yeah, definitely. I just think he's got to be aware to be, to be a little bit lighter on his feet and move side to side. You did also say to me, though, that compared to previous sightings, he looks so much bigger now, doesn't he? Even though he's doing the weight well enough. Has he got his, his man strength, as I think you fellas call it? I think he has. He looked, he looked very strong, physically very impressive, and um, he looks a big middleweight. 
never mind a light middleweight. Indeed, more against Macklin, that is a natural, isn't it? It's a great fight, and um, after that performance there, it's, um, it's very tricky for uh, Jamie Moore, this fight. Um, I think I want to lean towards Macklin now, but um, I'm sure Jamie's got other ideas. Let's hope it does all come together. We don't need to wait any time at all, virtually, for the big one this weekend. Here again, we just can't wait. Back to Las Vegas, Adam Smith. In one of the most eagerly awaited matchups of the year, the fabulous warriors Diego Corrales and Jose Luis Castillo clash for a third time. Castillo's been largely locked away during fight week, while Corrales seems as relaxed as ever and ready for battle. This would be a one-sided just dismantling of Castillo on that surf. In May 2005, Corrales and Castillo bared their souls in one of the greatest fights ever for the world lightweight crown. After nine rounds of brutal combat, Corrales was down twice in the 10th, but remarkably rallied from the very brink. I'm just mean and tough as nails, and I'm, I'm going to go through whatever I go through to win. And I think it's what I did the first fight. Greatest fight I've ever been at ringside for. I couldn't have believed the ending. I think if somebody wanted to make a real boxing movie, that would be the movie. Controversy hit their rematch last October when Castillo failed to make the 9 stone 9 lightweight limit. The Mexican was fined, a non-title overweight match was agreed, and Corrales was knocked out in the fourth. Why did you lose that? Was it because of the physical disadvantage or because you made a mistake? Both. Both physical disadvantage and the fact that I made a mistake. I can correct the uh, mistake I made, he'll correct the weight, and I'll take care of business. So the decider for the WBC lightweight title is fascinating. Will Castillo remain as effective if he's struggling at the weight? And will Corrales use his boxing skills or stand and fight in what looks to be the final chapter of this incredible story? I will dismantle Castillo, pick him apart. Well, there's a real buzz around the world's fight capital, and that usually happens when the term trilogy is mentioned. Over the years, remember the great ones. Rocky Graziano and Tony Zale lit up the 40s. In the 70s, of course, Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier ending in that thriller in Manila. More recently, we've had Riddick Bowe and Evander Holyfield settled their differences in this very city. So too, Marco Antonio Barrera and Eric Morales, a tale of Mexican machismo. And Arturo Gatti and Mickey Ward gave us a three-fight cracker. Jose Luis Castillo and Diego Corrales won a piece. What happens here this weekend? Who's got that psychological edge and who is prepared to dig that bit deeper? Who wants it more? We can't wait. You said it, Adam. Early Sunday then, live from 2 a.m. on Sky Sports 1, and there are replays at 7.30 in the morning on 1, and again at 10.30 a.m. Sunday morning on Sky Sports 2. Robert, how do you see it? I think it'll be a great fight. Um, I'm just leaning toward Castillo again. Uh, I don't think Corrales holds the best of shots, and I think uh, Castillo will knock him out, basically. <laughs> Lightweight in action here tonight, live here. Let's meet young Paul Appleby, just 18 years of age. One or two little whispers about this young man's talent. And up against him here, Graham Higginson from Blackburn. John McDonald will complete the introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue the action four rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing to you, firstly, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks. Weighing in at nine stone, five pounds, 14 ounces. Taking part in his seventh professional contest, he's from Blackburn. Please welcome Graham Higginson. And across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks trimmed with gold. Weighing in at nine stone, eight pounds, 10 ounces. He's undefeated in three contests, three wins, all inside the scheduled distance. Undefeated from South Queen Surrey, Scotland. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Paul Appleby. Timekeeper at the bell is Brian Heath and referee in charge of the action from Birmingham is Mr. Terry O'Connor. And this is four three minute rounds. 
You've both done the rules. Keep the punches up, but then it protects yourself at all times when I say break on it straight away, OK? Shake hands, best luck to both. Well, this 18-year-old Paul Appleby is probably going to be worth watching. He's only won three out of three so far. Comes from South Queensbury near Edinburgh, but has looked very good so far and indeed in sparring with the European Super Bantamweight champion Michael Hunter. He's in the gold trunks here in with Graham Higginson from Blackburn, who's a southpaw. Scotland will have high hopes of Appleby, but he's got plenty of time on his side. Looks boyish in there as well, doesn't he, with his kind of rock star haircut with the spiky hair. Giving away a bit of height and reach here to Higginson. They have met before, and the Appleby scored a third round stoppage. I didn't see that one, but uh, Higginson there. Uh, Maybe he fancies he didn't perform to his best that time. And here we go again. That other fight was when they met before was uh, in January in Glasgow. Signed of Appleby's talent that night. But Higginson did win as recently as last Saturday and inside two rounds. And winning that quickly, he was entitled under the British Boxing Board of Control rules to fight again here. Did lose his first four, but he's unbeaten in his last two, drawing a win. So his confidence may be rising. What can he do here with Appleby? Well, App Appleby's looking a bit more controlled than it was last time or something. It was a one-round job right enough last time. But he seems to be trying to think his way in at the moment. A bit more defensively minded, but... Uh, Higginson looks at the moment as though he has something to prove as well. Good burst of work from Higginson, who might be an improver. 23 years old from Blackburn, but only one out of six wins so far. He's got his father, Barry, working the corner for him tonight. Gold trunks, remember, Appleby. Just Appleby just struggling to find the range at the moment. I think, I wonder maybe when you're facing someone you've beaten and beaten them recently, Maybe you just fancy you're going to do the same thing again, but uh, Higginson giving him a lot of problems here, catching him as he comes forward. There he goes again. No. Young Apple, but just a little bit ragged in the opening round here. He's just walking on to one or two as well from Higginson, who might have learned from their first meeting. Body shots from Appleby. A little bit frustrated, the teenager. Tries to raise the tempo. Not what he had planned, this opening round, perhaps. Well, it's a good left hand, though. Beautifully thrown on the counter from the youngster. Yep, yeah, I think Appleby's happier working at a pace, there, firing on all cylinders. He's beginning to take control in the last uh, 10 seconds or so here. But he shipped a lot in the first couple of minutes. He was a little bit ragged, maybe just left it a, bit, a little bit late to turn this round in his favour. Stung in with that right hand towards the end of the round. Once he put his foot on the accelerator in the last minute of the round, Appleby was in control. Nice job. If you're just joining right us tonight, get, get the British and Commonwealth oh, welterweight championship fight shots. still to come. Right. Young Muttley, the it's British summer. champion, Kevin Anderson, the Commonwealth champion, in a much anticipated oh. match. This the hors d'oeuvre with Paul Appleby, an unbeaten prospect at lightweight, getting caught a little. Yeah, well, I think Appleby made the statement he wanted in the last half minute or so, but a little bit ragged up until then. Appleby in the gold trunks, looking to start fast at the beginning of round two. This is only due to go four rounds. Oh, it's another left hand. Hint of a slap about that, possibly, from Appleby, but it landed with plenty of force. All three of Appleby's wins have come inside schedule so far against this fellow, Ian Reid in three rounds, and Andy Davis of Wales in one. Yeah, Appleby certainly seems happier when he's setting a hot pace. He tried to box a little bit in the, the opening couple of minutes. He's been caught as he come forward, but he's far happier when he gets this fellow under pressure. Good 
good right hand to the body as well from Appleby, who's picking his punches quite well now. Higginson's rhythm broken. He started off confidently. And at the moment, he's just finding that Appleby is whipping up a bit of a storm, maybe a little too quick for him. certainly a prospect a young Appleby but I think there's a few little things need tightened up here and there oh, that's a beauty well, that right hand was a peach of a punch he measured it and Dex Higginson with that oh and he's going to have to stop it he got up and his legs were about to give way when Terry O'Connor just stepped in to prop him up keep him up right that knocked everything out of him that's another stoppage win Appleby, who looks like he can hit a bit as well. Pressure fighter and quite exciting. Only 18, as Jim was saying, a few things to work on, but everything going his way so far, all right. Yeah, definitely an excellent prospect. Uh, just at a time when it looked as though Higginson maybe started to give him a few problems. He pulled that beautiful right hand lead out of the bag, bang on to the point of the chin. And you can see, uh, when he regained his feet, you can see there was nothing there, his balance was gone. Beautiful one-punch finish. So he's reached right in with a punch, caught right on the point of the chin, and you see the way Higginson collapsed to the floor. It was all over for the night. Uh, he stepped right in. The punch was long, just seemed to catch him at the end of his journey, but it certainly did the job. Great prospect, a few little things to tighten up, but we'll have to remember he's only a kid and he's really on a roll. Four out of four, four KOs. He'll sell some tickets, I would say. Yep, especially north of the border. You see the promoter's eyes lighting up from here. And uh, Higginson was never going to beat a count of half a minute there, let alone ten seconds. Or be fit, ready anyway to carry on, ready for action. Good win that for Appleby. Four out of four wins, and all inside schedule. Ladies and gentlemen, timekeeper Brian Heath has recorded a time of one minute and 58 seconds of the second round. Referee Terry O'Connor has stopped the contest with Higginson in no position to continue. Your winner, and still undefeated, from South Queensbury, Paul Appleby. And let's show our appreciation, please, a very brave boxer indeed, Graham Higginson. Don't know about selling tickets in Scotland. With a start like that, he might soon become a big ticket seller around the rest of the country as well. Robert, what were your impressions? The first thing is he looks like a baby, doesn't he? <laughs> totally. He looks too young to <laughs> No, be Robert, it's you getting older, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, no um, he's very keen. He's 4-0 he's, he's oh now. When, you, you, when you're winning like that, it's got all going great. He's obviously got to mature and get older and get stronger, but um, great start for him. He does seem to have a natural idea of the game, though, doesn't he, which is the exciting part. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that was a good right, right hook combolo shot that he, that he caught Higginson with, and um, he seems very keen, enthusiastic, and um, he's going well. Four out of four, then, for Paul Appleby, and we can't wait to see him next time out at lightweight. But the top of the bill tonight comes at welterweight. Ed Robinson sets it up for us. British champion against Commonwealth champion. Tonight, Young Mutley and Kevin Anderson square up for an explosive confrontation. Oh, tremendous shot. Absolute hook. The two of them are capable of um, hurting each other. Uh, the two of them are both champions and they want to hang on to their title. Two big titles on the line, so this is a winner takes all in a big welterweight fight. Yeah, it's going to be a good fight. From, the, from round one, it's going to be fireworks straight away. They can both fight and they can both punch, but they've reached this juncture from very different directions. Up on Scotland's wild Fife coast, Anderson's been groomed for success since his eye-catching amateur days. Blitzing early foes before proving his championship medal against the highly regarded Joshua O'Kine. Kevin Anderson, the youngster, becomes Commonwealth welterweight champion. This is another step up and another challenge, and I think that's what I needed, a challenge to bring the best out of me, and hopefully this brings the best out of me. While Mutley's had to break through the hard way, overcoming tough setbacks to capture his title in an upset against the previously unbeaten Michael Jennings. 
Oh, it's great, fantastic feeling. So it's, it's one of my dreams. One of my dreams come true. Just gotta keep going on there and winning more. Mutley is home advantage. Anderson the confidence of an undefeated record. And both have the power to finish a fight in any given moment. I can't see it getting to points at all. There'll be a stoppage or something, I think. It's going to be me what stops, stops Anderson. I'm ready for this one. I'm real up for it and everything's went spot on and sparring and training. I'm going to go away with the title. They've done a great job of explaining to us, Robert, how much this one means in either camp. But from your point of view, with young Muttley as a British champion, is it possible that he will have fulfilled all his ambitions by getting to that stage at the age of 30? Well, according to, to listening to his comments the other day, I'm not sure he, um, he's talking about going on to win the European title. He had a few dissenting voices when he beat Michael Jennings for the British title. And there's nothing worse than winning a British title and hearing them voices. And I'm sure he's got a lot to prove tonight. And, I, and you know, he'll, he'll be keyed up to prove it. And we have seen men improve completely, the confidence level rise significantly by winning a British title, haven't we? Well, winning a British title, your confidence level go through the roof. And um, you know you're a champion then and you prepare like one. And um, I'm sure Muttley has. What about Anderson? Would you make him favourite? I'd make him a slight favourite. I just think he's, he's slightly the bigger man. I think in the ring fight time, I think he'd be a little bit heavier than Muttley, who obviously makes the weight quite easily, he's new to it. And um, I'd have Anderson a slight favourite, but both can punch and Muttley can certainly punch early. What kind of fight can we expect here, tactically? I think it's going to be fairly tricky early on. It's going to be quite cagey, because, like I say, both can punch. Um, I think Muttley's going to be looking to get a bit of room and Anderson's going to be looking to press. But um, if neither of them get caught early, it's going to develop into a really interesting battle. Robert, thank you so much for setting it up for us. Muttley, they say, has been avoided. Anderson knows that this is his chance to take firm control domestically at welterweight. Top of the bill is next. Stanspoker.com. Have it. Look at this. How's the ice going to go? Two great champions collide for the third time. Corrales v. Castillo, in association with StanSpoker.com. Saturday night at 2, live on Sky Sports 1. StanSpoker.com. Send it. Hey! On Sky Sports next Wednesday night, Nikolai Valuev and Owen Beck for the WBA World Heavyweight title. You can see it next Wednesday at 8 on Sky Sports 1. Live tonight in Birmingham, a city firmly back on the boxing map. It's England versus Scotland too for the British and Commonwealth welterweight titles. It has all the ingredients, this one. Our MC, John MacDonald. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the moment we've all been waiting for. It is the main event, the fight of the night. Please welcome to the ring now, from Methel Fight in Scotland, the reigning Commonwealth World of Weight Champion, it's Kevin Anderson! <laughs> Biggest fight so far for 23-year-old Kevin Anderson, who comes from the former mining town of Methel on the Fife Coast in Scotland. His last three fights have been in Kokodi. He's picked up the Commonwealth Championship at welterweight and he arrives here in the Midlands away from home kind of entering the lion's den here confident that he'll be going back with the British championship as well if he does that he'd be only the second British and Commonwealth welterweight champion from Scotland the other was Gary Jacobs and the British champion young Buckley is on his way Emphasizing the English element of this Anglo-Scottish confrontation. Fans have been having a bit of fun with that as well. And now, ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome to the ring from West Bromwich, the reigning British World of Weight Champion, Young Matley. 
massive support for young Muckley, whose real name is Lee Woodley, but his dad was called Muckley after the character, the cartoon character in Wacky Races, and the nickname has passed on from father to son. He's an interesting character who freely admits that boxing has saved him from a life of drugs and crime. He did spend some time in jail in a, what he describes as a bad youth when he ran with gangs. But boxing sorted him out, and his big moment came a few months ago when he won the British Championship against Michael Jennings. People have argued about it, but it was a great performance, really, from Butley, who not many had given a chance to. He's unbeaten for six and a half years as well now. Fighting at home, a West Brom fan at the Villa. 30 years old now, young Buckley, Anderson, the younger man, the prospect who's just arrived, he's 23. Anderson, 10 stone six, a little lighter on the night, but naturally the heavier of these two, because Buckley has spent much of his career as a light welterweight. Reach advantage for young Buckley there. He's had a few more fights, been around that bit longer, boxed a few more rounds. Power, well, they both can hit a bit. And they've got an exciting style. This ought to be a good fight, and a lot of people around British boxing circus have been looking forward to this one. Sit back and enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event, the fight of the night. Barry Hearn for Matram Sport, in association with EJKO Promotions, proudly presents 12 rounds of boxing for the British and Commonwealth Welterweight Championships. Sponsored here by Broadway and Shaftesbury Casino. And a very warm welcome to our viewers joining us live here on Sky Sports. It's a ringside live. All the officials have been appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control and the Commonwealth Council. Board of Control Chairman, Mr. Charlie Giles at ringside. Fight Supervisor for the Commonwealth is Mr. Tony Beam. Area Representative, Mr. Dave Roden. Inspectors, Nigel Underwood, Don Bartlett, Richard Bourne, Phil Jones and Susan Potts. And our three medical officers led by Dr. Sharp. Dr. Chowdhury and Dr. Sassaro. Our three scoring judges at ringside. From Kent, Richie Davis. From London, Marcus McDonald. And from Birmingham, Terry O'Connor. Timekeeper at the bell from Stoke-on-Trent is Mr. Harry Foxall. And referee in charge of the action from Preston is Mr. Phil Edwards. They are the officials, here are the contestants, and firstly, introducing to you. He's fighting out of the red corner, wearing the green trunks trimmed with white. He weighed in at 10 stone and 6 pounds. Undefeated 16 contest, 16 wins, 10 inside the scheduled distance. He comes to the ring undefeated as the reigning Commonwealth welterweight champion from Methel in the Kingdom of Spite, Scotland. It's Kevin Anderson! And across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the red and white trunks, weighing in a 10 stone, 6 pounds, 2 ounces. With a 21 fight record, 20 wins, 11 inside the scheduled distance, and only one loss. He makes his first defence. He is the reigning and defending British waterweight champion from West Bromwich. It's Young Matley! Sports fans and ringside live. It's 12 rounds of boxing for the British and Commonwealth Welterweight Championship. Okay, gentlemen, you've had your instructions in the dressing room. You know what I expect of you. Touch gloves. Good luck to you both. Watch for Muckley early on with his left hook in particular. He's pretty heavy handed, even though he's only recently arrived up at Welterweight. Anderson may be the more consistent of the two. Mutley can sometimes be a little bit lazy in his fights. We'll have to be careful he doesn't get outworked here. An Anglo-Scottish battle then for the British and Commonwealth welterweight championships. Mutley the British champion, 
in the white and red, the green of Anderson from Scotland, who is the Commonwealth champion. Something has to give here. One of them will be a dual champion by the end of the night. Good left hook from Anderson. He just caught him with it again. That's the left hook, then right hand, followed by a left hook. I think Anderson realises he's got to get this fella under control and on the back foot. Although Anderson is probably naturally bigger, I think this fellow carries more power than his single punches. Oh, then he's just shaking him with that one. He did, didn't he? That left hand early we were talking about from Young Mutley, whose confidence might have risen dramatically after years in the wilderness because of his British title win over Michael Jennings might make him a different fighter. He feels he was avoided and sidetracked and ignored, nearly gave up the business, in fact, before he got his surprise chance. Great support for young Muckley, and here he's from West Bromwich, just up the road here from the Aston Villa Leisure Centre, just under the Aston Expressway in Birmingham. Well, Anderson getting the punches off a little bit quicker, these jabs working well. He's already tasted the, the danger in Muttley's left hook. Anderson unbeaten in 16 contests, and seven of those wins have come inside a couple of rounds. So he has a bit of power too. Anderson's getting his punches off and threes, not giving Muttley a chance to counter. I think he realises a single jab could be dangerous. Much anticipated fight, that's very good work again from Muckley. Three punch combination from him, he's been pretty accurate with his work. Anderson comes back, this could be an even Steven kind of battle. Most people saw it as a 50-50 fight going in. Yeah, well, Muckley's maybe had Anderson, another good shot from Muckley, the single. You can see the power in these shots, there it goes again. Sharp, fast punches from Young Mutley, eye-catching punches. And even doubling up on the jab, he makes Anderson give some ground. He looks bigger, even though the perception before this fight was that Anderson was naturally the heavier man of the two. Most of the work, I think that the judges will know this. You know what I mean? He's only got one style. Don't get drawn into a scrap. Young Mutley, his last four fights have gone the distance, but he showed a bit of power in that first round. Yeah, I thought the quality punches came from Mutley in the opening round, the dangerous punches, but the work rate was with Anderson. I thought Anderson was putting punches together, his jab was working well. But I think actually both men will be happy with the performance in the opening round. Here's round two for the British and Commonwealth welterweight championships. Hartley's record, by the way, 20 wins, only one defeat. That was against Waheed Fats early in his career. He was flawed. He has been on the floor in his career, and sometimes pretty dangerous when he gets up from that kind of thing. A little left hand on the end, and then a good right too from Anderson. Back comes Butley with a left hook, and Anderson gets ground his terrific action. Another full-blooded shot from Mutley Anderson. He's taken them well, but he doesn't want to be taken too many. Early on, the impression is of Mutley with just a bit of extra dig. Just an impression. and reliable. He's got an old head on young shoulders. More quality punches from Mutley, double left hook. Anderson has been caught too cleanly, his power hasn't troubled Mutley in the slightest. He's been troubled several times already. Mutley too with the home advantage which will lift him. It's always in your favour that of course. 
just feel at this point that Anderson is the one with the problems, he's felt the power, he's just maybe been a little bit cagey, not quite the confidence they would like to put into his work because he's been nailed with counters a couple of times which have shaken him. It might have hurt young Matley all the debate about his British title win over Michael Jennings. And they want to make it emphatic and show here tonight that it was certainly no fluke. Oh, what a left hand! Flores Anderson, absolutely brilliant shot from Jan Buckley. Anderson's up quickly, but how much has that knocked out of him? Well, he's given several warnings. And that's what happens, you don't take the warnings, he's in all sorts of trouble here. Matley just slipped to the floor, that gave Anderson only the briefest respite, and he needs it too. Matley is looking to nail him again, he's fast as well, as these left hooks are winning around Anderson, a bit too, bit too easy to hit. Anderson needs to find the power to discourage Matley a little bit, he hasn't found it yet. Big round for Buckley, he was winning it without the knockdown. Kevin Anderson facing a crisis because of this. Well, several times Anderson has been warned about the left hook, but he's dropping his right hand. Buckley looks to be like a left-handed fighter, although he's orthodox because all the power seems to be in that left hook. It's a beautiful punch. See, you can see he's taking what Anderson's got, coming right through and landing much better punches. That's the left hook from, from Anderson, but it was more of a stumble. No way was that a knockdown. As we said, the single punch power, definitely with Mutley. Not counted as a knockdown as well when Mutley was on the floor. But Anderson very definitely down. This is the third round of this. Explosive stuff already. And the Midlands fans who haven't had too much to shout about one way and another, not only in this sport, pretty excited about what they're seeing so far. Can Anderson claw his way back from this? He's not used to this kind of treatment in his pro career so far. Well, Mutley's just extra experience, having been around the game that bit longer, work for him as well. Can Anderson find a response? And I don't think Anderson's outboxing Mutley the way he expected to do, a tremendous amateur pedigree. I'm sure he thought he would have come off best at long range. Not really happening. There's that left hand again, and he's dropping his glove, and he's been a bit of a sucker for that, Anderson. He must have known about it in all the preparations for the fight. But Mutley saw something, he was at ringside watching Anderson against Craig Dixon in a Commonwealth title defence. He said he saw things to take advantage of. Anderson challenged him to prove it. Well, maybe he is so far. He also said he wasn't all that impressed with Anderson that night. Well, he certainly not in the slightest worried about his reputation. Drop the pace a little bit in this round, maybe looking for the single pot shots, which have been so successful for him. Anderson's going to need work rate and improved defence to get back in this, you feel. Maybe he can outwork Mutley and then keep himself out of trouble as much as possible, tighten up that defence. That has to be surely be the plan. A bit better there as he gets away with a good jab. What Anderson wants to be doing is the right hand on the chin and get that jab working because he's landing it well, he's stepping right in with it, it's accurate. But there's always the problem every time Mutley's left hook goes. Got to get that right glove up. There's Anderson. Otherwise, there's another left hook on the way sometime soon. That one didn't land, it was parried that time. Anderson just there uh, again doing this and what rate this round. I mean, I will say there's nothing wrong with his chin because he seemed to clear straight away as soon as he got back up. He was back down to business again, but that was a heavy knockdown. He did well to get up from it, really. Might have knocked a lot of people out. 
better from Anderson. At least he's getting a bit of a foothold in this round. He's just gone a little lazy, perhaps, young Muckley this time around. And in doing that, has just allowed Anderson to regather himself, so to speak. That more rhythm than what Anderson's doing now, using the range well, come back really well. Good run for Anderson. Deep breath, come on, slow it down, slow it down. Errol Johnson and his team in the corner, Bob Plant, the cut man, Jason Shinfield as well. Busy little gym up the road from here at Wensbury. It's going well, the gym, but they need Muttley to deliver for them tonight. Fourth round. British champion Young Muttley in the white and red trunks, the green of Scotland's Kevin Anderson. Anderson on the floor, heavily, in round two. Anderson's landing the left hook well, but it's not budging Muttley, that is the big difference between the two of them. Although Motley didn't quite look so happy in the corner at the end of the previous round there. Quick fire punches from Anderson. Yeah, just countered there. Motley occasionally looking disorganised when Anderson does breach his defences. I mean, sometimes when you put a man down heavily, if he gets back up and right down to business, they can have a worst effect on the man who scored the knockdown. Because Motley is just going to get into a little shell a few times uh, since that knockdown. Left hand is a cut, bad cut, right eye of Kevin Anderson, and he's blinking away the blood. We think a clash of heads has caused that, and it does look quite bad, as if Anderson didn't have enough problems. He's caught by that left hand, and that moved him as well. This is lifted Motley, he gets back to work, piles in the punches, crowd are on their feet all around the ring here, as Motley steps it up again. Just when Anderson was beginning to get back, that cut looks bad, Jim. It does look bad. We'll see you. An experienced referee, Phil Edwards, will let it go to the end of the round, give the corner a chance to work on it. But just the last thing Kevin Anderson needed, he's got enough problems in here. It might be obscuring the vision a little bit as well. Just when he was starting to find a rhythm to Anderson. See, that's the story so far. Better quality punches, more telephone from Motley, but they work great from Anderson. He got with the right to the temple there as well. He's that... taken too many of these left hooks, defences non-existent. Maybe he feels he has to gamble because of the cut. But he really has to think that it is a long game and that the corner can do something to mend that. That left hook has changed his mind, Dean. That left hook a few seconds ago has put him on the back foot. Yeah, he's shaken up by these, he's getting buzzed up by young Muttley's left hook and Muttley might take him out if he's not careful with one of these. He's looking a puncher in there tonight, the Midlander. Anderson's legs don't look strong, I think that left hook halfway through the round took a lot out of him, he's not got himself back together again yet. in big control and Anderson heavily cut in the fourth. Not his night so far, not at all. <laughs> Chance of easy, easy from the Midlands fans. These defences are non existent here, the heads coming together, you can see that, uh, which caused, obviously caused the cut. But he still hasn't learned this left hook. I'm amazed how many times Buckley has caught him cleanly with it. And every time it lands cleanly, you can see the effect it has. And that was the one that just for the rest of that round, Anderson didn't quite have his equilibrium. Round. So I think if that cut was to stop the fight, 
there will be no question at all that Muttley would be declared the winner. Red and white, remember, young Muttley. Green of Kevin Anderson from Methyl in Fife, seven years younger. Young Muttley, the fighter who thought he was going nowhere, despite continuing to clock up wins along the way of varying quality. I mean, this is a difficult job for Anderson. Every time he's caught cleanly, he's stunned by the punches. I mean, Muttley has just come along quietly through his career, always producing the goods, but he really has come on in leaps and bounds since he came up to title level. Benny King's done his best with the cut. For the moment, it's OK, but will it reopen? Got a good man in the corner on that front. Trouble is for Anderson, he can't really make a dent on Young Muttley, and Young Muttley's leaving more than dents in Anderson so far. For me, that's the big difference between the two. Anderson's punches have had no effect whatsoever on Muttley. Muttley can come through them, still get his own punches off. Oh, and there's another one that dipped the knees, didn't it? That left hook every time. The Muttley honey punch, that left hook, it's worked for him a treat tonight. We've said winning titles improves a fighter. That's definitely the case with young Muttley. He's controlled in there, picking his punches beautifully. Anderson's having to alter the tactics if he's trying to do it in one rate. He realises he can't take chances. There's the left hook again. He just has to hold on for a moment. Is Anderson running out of ideas a little? Muttley is a bit quicker too and has a reach advantage, and that is helping him as well in this fight plus the home advantage. At the moment, he must feel as if he's trying to swim against a pretty heavy current, Kevin Anderson. And this is the pace that Muttley wants to work at. Anderson must have planned to outwork him, to dictate the pace, dictate the action. It's not happening. He's having to think before he makes any moves because he's been stunned so often by single punches. Anderson needs to do something just to lift his confidence in the fight. Land a punch maybe that can shake up Muttley a bit. Muttley has been on the floor in his career. Could Anderson find a punch that might do that? At the moment, Muttley looks confident and dominant. Did you come up to the end? Just change the angle, yeah? Keep that right handle, that's all he do. That's, yeah. he throws an By the way, good pay night too for Stop these two fighters tonight. Such was the purse bidding, and it went to a couple of rounds of it before Errol Johnson won the purse bids at around £50,000. That's not bad for them to share out, is it? Yeah, but I tell you, they're having to watch for particularly Kevin Anderson. Good pay night, and they're earning it. Plenty of interest as well here. Sixth round of this. White and red, British champion, Young Muttley, green. Kevin Anderson, the Commonwealth champion. Nice jab from Anderson, but he's going to need more of that. I don't think Anderson has the confidence to step right in with the punches now. He's been shaken so often. Half of his mind is on landing punches, the other half is on what's coming back his way. But he's going to have to step in there, get some punches off at long range, and at this pace, it's suiting Muttley. If Anderson could get on the inside and maybe wade away to the body a bit, it, it could help him, but that's a pretty big if. I think he's got to get in, get the punches off and get back out again. But he's kind of caught between two minds at the moment. There's not an awful lot of a look of confidence in what Anderson's doing. He's been shaken too often. Cuts holding up reasonably well so far. Muttley trying to look for gaps again. Again, he wins away. And when he throws that left hook, he's with real menace and some very, very good hand speed as well. Two body punches, then a left to the head. Much improved fighter, this young Muttley. 
not happen. And I think the idea that we had is that uh, Anders was physically the stronger, naturally bigger. I think we can forget that he's shaking again. That's a right hand this time before the left. And you just felt for a moment that Anderson was spinning like a top. The cut gets a bit worse again. The jab thuds in. It's all going Mutley's way here. I think the accumulation of the solid punches that Anderson has taken in these rounds have knocked out of him, and I don't think there's any way back. I think he's been drained of all his assets. He's standing at arm's length. There's not a great deal of fire in anything that he does. He's in huge trouble here. He had that wonderful win over Joshua Aquine to win the Commonwealth title. It was a close one, a split decision. Looked to be on his way, but he's finding that young Mutley is something else again here. Lovely uppercut, then a left hook. Class shots from Mutley, who on this evidence might even be able to go beyond British and Commonwealth level. He looks a right handful, doesn't he? Yep, I just think he's taken away the strength that Anderson usually has. Anderson's not able to set a pace and hold up. Another good round. For the British champion. You never stand an eight with a hand up. Benny King, the cut man, telling Anderson he has to get his glove up to stop the left hook from winging in every time. Like I, that. I think Anderson knows what's required, but I think the strength has been drained from his legs with the accumulation of the solid punches that he's taken. There's still a strong, confident look in everything Mutley does, not the same in Anderson's work into the second half of the contest. And the question at the moment is not so much who's going to win it as whether Anderson can get through to the end of it. He's got a little knot of about 60 fans over in the corner. They've fallen quite quiet with the way things have developed here, whereas the Mutley fans are having a bit of a party. West Bromwich Albion might have been relegated from the Premiership, but certainly young Mutley from West Bromwich, one of their fans, is certainly being promoted in boxing at the moment. still controlling the pace, working at the pace he enjoys working at. Anderson not able to do anything about that. Just can't really get into range as well. Mutley's just keeping him on the end of the jab, and when he can, winging away with those fast hooks. Looks stronger as well. Clips him with a right hand to the temple, then another left to oozing confidence. The man from the black country. from Anderson, a couple of right uppercuts in the bottom shot, Mutley though says take that, refusing to be dominated once again, the right hand far too low, he's been caught so often with the left hook, you think that right hand would be up there and the work will be coming from his left Mutley we love you, they're chanting I bet he never thought he'd hear that when he was knocking around undercards all that time This is a fighter who's paid his dues in the business, isn't it? Yeah, he's just come along quietly. What he says is true, he couldn't seem to get a decent fight at like welterweight. He stepped up to welterweight and what a turnaround in his career. Oh, and he's caught there, they just left his chin hanging out to dry. Anderson did get there with one, but... There wasn't a lot of power in that. No. He rode it, didn't he? Well, Anderson's work has certainly improved in this round. Put a lot more into it, maybe he's beginning to shake the effects of, of the earlier onslaughts. But it's not his normal performance, it's not the way he normally likes to box. Mutley just getting a little ragged that time. A bit more precision from Anderson. Give him credit for his stickability here. He's taken a lot. He's had to really take his lumps, but he's still trying to battle away.
Well, let's have a look at some of the big names who've held both of these titles. The great Ted Kid Lewis, possibly the greatest British boxer ever from 1920 to 24. Eddie Thomas, the pride of Martha Tidwell, around the time of 49 to 1951. It was Brian Curvis in the 1960s, then big punching left hooker Colin Jones. Sylvester Mitty, extrovert character, remember him. Lloyd Hannigan, who went on to become a very fine world welterweight champion, the great winner over Don Curry, remember. And for Scotland, Gary Jacobs, the only Scot to be British and Commonwealth welterweight champion. Anderson, long odds against at the moment to join him. Eighth round, red and white trunks of young Muttley. Who's in a big lead, commanding lead. So no matter what Anderson does, Motley is able to stand his ground, take what comes, and still able to come back with shots. By the way, three judges scoring. These fights, these days, Richie Davis, Marcus McDonald, and Birmingham's Terry O'Connor, who scored for Young Mutley in his controversial win over Michael Jennings. We have a Birmingham judge, we don't have a Scottish judge. I wonder why that is then. I think we'll, we'll, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt here and see it was a close uh, verdict as opposed to controversial, because a lot of people did feel Mutley won the fight. Let's just say it was debatable, wasn't it? It was a yeah. close fight. Yeah. Could have gone either way. Yeah. Anderson had to dig really deep and give him credit for that. But digging deep is one thing, and starting to win some rounds is another. And win some rounds he badly needs to do. Motley has been known to fall asleep in some of his fights, but uh, at this level, it's such an important fight, not advisable. Fall asleep, it looks like he's plugged into the national grid tonight, Jim. Well, Anderson knows a big drive is required, that's what he's trying to come up with. solve it in the course of the contest it does raise a little question about the preparation doesn't it they must have known young Mutley was dangerous with the left hook but there's no sign really of any great defense against that weapon no there's no there's none actually and i think up to now anderson's been able to keep the other fella too occupied to worry about his own arsenal he hasn't done that tonight Mutley not as impressive in that round perhaps not much in it Make a couple of rounds up here, come on. Hey, then stop leading off with your fucking right hand, will you please? Okay, man. Well, they're trying to lift him in that corner. But it's a, it's a road, a long uphill road, which must look like the side of Ben Nevis to him at the moment. Well, he knows what's required, and he's definitely trying to come up with that. He's just forcing, just trying to grind things out. He expected, obviously, to outbox Muttley. That hasn't happened. But he seems to have uh, warmed, if you like, to, to the power of Muttley's punches. He hasn't been troubled for a few rounds. So maybe there'll be more confidence in what he does from here on in. Round nine, young Muttley's lead. Still a big one. Maybe he knows that. Maybe he knows he has the points in the bank. 
just gone off the boil slightly in terms of sharpness and snap in the last couple of rounds, young Matley. But if he is coasting for a bit, it's coasting he can afford. punches there's a bit more sharpness about him now and Motley has definitely dropped the pace of it just a bit more life pumped into the legs of Anderson went through a horrendous period in the fight where he was decked heavily but badly fought repeatedly he's just trying now to see if he can claw his way back somehow it's a it's a long way back. Good body punching from Young Mutley, who steps it up again. See, Mutley seems able to get into the driving seat whenever he likes. It seems to be his temperament. He doesn't drive himself on sometimes the way you feel he should. And he looks so much stronger when he starts going forward. round up to now, he's been careful, he's been cagey, Motley hasn't produced too much. Yeah, I agree with you, Jim, he's just been that bit more accurate as well. Just going through a flat spell in the fight, Motley here. The Scottish fans are trying to lift Anderson, almost as if they can sense that he's trying somehow to engineer a comeback, it would be an improbable one. There's a left hook once again, no defence whatsoever. operator at whatever level. Well, it's a few rounds since he's been shaken by any of these single shots. So it looks to me as if his head's cleared a little bit. Maybe not quite the start and not his punches. That's a better new one. We need more fucking speed. Well, that corner is happy enough on the left there, the uh, young Mutley corner left by Eric Johnson and his team. Well, you can see how I'm looking at things there. Mutley in a handy lead with only three rounds to go, he only has to win one more round. And my car. So, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm counting the wrong way, they're only one point in. Actually, counting my head, I thought I had them covered ahead. Well, it's tighter than I thought myself. I must say, I've got Huntley in a much bigger lead than that, but uh, there you go. Three judges to score it, remember, Ricky Davis, Marcus McDonald and Terry O'Connor. This is round number 10. Three rounds to go. Maybe Huntley just need to pick it up a bit, though, as he goes in towards the home stretch. He gets so much so early in the fight. Anderson gets a little right over the top. See, again, when Motley goes forward, he looks so much stronger than Anderson. As he worried about the 12-round distance, as he's just having a breather in the last couple of rounds. But there's definitely been a dip, and he's worked great. This is more like it. Much more devil about Mutley's work throughout, really. I think a big factor in this fight, you know, has been speed as well. The speed of Mutley's punches as well as the power of them. I think that's why Anderson has found it 
Well, one of the reasons he's found it so hard to get out of the way, apart from the fact that he, he leaves his right glove a bit low. Yeah, I just feel he's had a few bad habits in his earlier career, and I think uh, he's really been found out with them tonight. The, the right hand's always been far too low. The head, a bit too stationary as he moves forward. Picking up the action again, good right hand in the middle, through the middle from... Matley, who got his gloves up well in his defence, was better than Anderson's effort. Anderson with a left hook on the way in. Suddenly the tempo rises again. Anderson does score with a left hook, but it's more Manny, oh, he's got him! Manny's hurt! Manny's hurt, and Anderson has a breakthrough! Is there going to be an astonishing turnaround? He was right there! Young Manny, he's all over the place! His legs have gone! Anderson can win it here! Against all odds! What a turnaround! in desperate trouble, tries to hold on, but he's sagging against those ropes, he desperately has to hold on, can he get through it, oh he's gone, totally. What an amazing tumble on that one single punch, did it? And he stopped, Kevin Anderson wins the British and Commonwealth welterweight championships in an astonishing turnaround, he turned that fight on his head in round 10 to give Scotland a famous, famous win. Well, not quite Castillo Corrales, but what kind of turnaround was that? He just, at this stage in a very hard fight, one single punch can just drain everything. And that's what happened here, unbelievable. I didn't see that happening. But he was coming back to life again in his performance. It looked as though he was going to start dominating again. That one punch like a left to fight him to the chin, just took everything away from him. Unbelievable turnaround from Kevin Anderson. I regret to tell you that there's a bit of crowd trouble at the end here over on the Park Cup side where the Scottish fans are congregated. Let's hope that quickly quiets down. But what a fight we saw there, and young Muttley will feel that he's thrown that away. What a win for Kevin Anderson, what a triumph for his stickability. He had to come through so much of a crisis. He looked a long way behind to me in the fight. Muttley looked to have it all under control, but one moment there was an equaliser. Well, that's what, and as I say, at this stage in the fight, when you're beginning to tire a little bit and you get caught with clean punches, but if someone was going to get a result here with a single punch, you'd have put your house on it, it was going to be young Muttley. He's the one who had the power all the way through so many times. He troubled Anderson with his power. Unbelievable. Now let's look at this again. As I'm afraid the crowd trouble gets a little worse here at ringside with people trying to get into the ring now. Well, well Muttley had gone to sleep but for me for a couple of rounds, just dropped to pace and he walked right on to the left hook. You can see the legs dip and then he's doubled up with that again. But you saw how the legs dipped with the punch. Didn't have the experience of maybe, didn't have his wits about him to grab hold of Anderson. But there you go, that, that's, the, that's the first punch that caught him a little bit high. And he's still coming forward. Bang, that's the one that did the damage. Then he come back with another left hook shortly after that. But the first one was the one that drained everything away from Muttley. Saw his chance, and it says a lot for his condition that he can pour the punches on here. Tremendous performance. He saw a chance he didn't think he'd be seeing. And he went for it, he did not stop throwing punches until the referee had no choice but to stop it. And as you're watching this, the MC is just trying to calm down the crowd here, things getting a bit excitable. But what a performance by Kevin Anderson, who took so much, and that was where Phil Edwards stepped in, and it's where the dream disappeared for young Muttley. Well, he seemed to have recovered, he seemed stunned for a few rounds as though there was no strength in his work, but suddenly he got a second win as though he'd thrown the effects of the punch. There was a lot more strength, a bit more confidence in his work. And then when he got that chance, he had the condition and the will to win just to pour the punches on, never stop throwing punches until the referee stopped it. That was unbelievable. Well, you mentioned the Diego Corrales uh, Jose Luis Castillo first fight. That was obviously at world level, this is British and Commonwealth, but very similar, same round, 10th round, fight turned on its head. Amazing stuff. For the neutrals, sensational action.
a heartbreaker for young Muttley. For Kevin Anderson, he joins Gary Jacobs in history as the only Scots to win British and Commonwealth welterweight crowds. Ladies and gentlemen, two minutes and 18 seconds of the 10th round. The referee, Phil Edwards, has stopped this contest. Your winner, and still the Commonwealth champion, and the newly crowned British champion from Methyl Fight, Kevin Anderson. And please show your appreciation from West Bromwich for Young Muttley. Marvellous sportsmanship from both, and you can only admire their bravery and the demonstration of their courage and contrast it with the idiocy of some of Young Muttley's supporters who instigated the trouble at ringside tonight. Happily, that does appear to be under control here now. What a triumph for this man. He has come from nowhere in one fight, he was so far out of it to become British and Commonwealth welterweight champion. But surely young Muttley can come again after a display which showed all the skills that we had heard talked about on undercards around the country, but we just hadn't seen enough of. Robert McCracken, we thought that Barnes Vincent was the last word at this level in terms of a British welterweight title fight. How was that for you? What a tremendous fight. For Anderson to come back where he came back and win the fight, a tremendous performance, and um, you've got to feel for Motley, really. He had the fight won, and um, it slipped away. Thank you, Robert. We'll come back to you in just a moment. Ed Robinson speaks to a sensational winner now. Well, exactly. Sensational win, Kevin. How on earth did you pull that around at the end? Oh, it was a big, big one. I mean, that's what it says. We went through all the pain in the gym, pushing our body to a different level, and that's why you dare to come back at like that. I mean, he's a hell of a, he's a great fighter, as you see against Michael Jennings, but pulled out the bag, I told you I would turn it on when I move up from class, and I think I done that tonight. You were down heavily in the second round, how badly hurt were you? I wasn't hurt, I just, I just didn't see it coming, I didn't even feel it, I just, next time I was on the floor, and I, I knew he was a big puncher, and if I dropped that right hand, he was in with the big left hook, and I got caught, and it was better getting caught early, we see where I could put it back instead of the later rounds, but... Managed to wear him down and pull it back and come away with the man. You got caught all night with that left hook. How did you keep your self belief? That's what all the training's for. The training's to get the legs tight, everything's to be strong in there. And he caught me with some big punches, but that's what the training's for. I mean, we work hard as a team and we pulled it off tonight. You've got those two belts now. What does that mean to you? Oh, it's great. I promised Sonny that I was going to take the belts on I and mean, I just could not let them go and managed to put it in the bag and he'll pay the belts tonight. Finally, some sympathy for Muttley, having tried so hard. Oh, he's a great fighter. I, mean, I thought it was close when he fought Jennings, and as you watch the replay, he did well, and he maybe deserved to win it, but he's a strong guy. For coming up at Lightweight, well, he's a hell of a fighter, but we want to fight the best, and Muttley was number one at the time, and makes us number one. Well done tonight. It was a big gabble by his camp. Somehow it paid off, but he was any price, any price during that. More from Robert McCracken as the dust settles on a memorable British and Commonwealth title fight. Stanspoker.com, have it. Stanspoker.com, send it. Next week from Sky Sports on Wednesday night, Nikolai Valuev against Owen Beckett's the WBA World Heavyweight title fight. You can see it next Wednesday at 8 on Sky Sports 1. They've served up something special here tonight, Kevin Anderson and Young Muttley, but it is Anderson who goes home with the spoils, turning it all round to become British and Commonwealth welterweight champion. Could you explain to us how he did that, Robert? It's hard to explain. Um, we spoke earlier about the weight maybe coming into it the longer the fight went on, but the start Muttley made and the left hooks he was landing, you just thought the fight was out of Anderson. From, and you warned us, credit to you, this has been an underrated fighter. From the off tonight, how good did young Muttley look? I thought he looked terrific. He boxed fantastically. I don't want to 
just keep going on about the left hooks because they were great shots, but his all-round game was terrific, his preparation was great and he boxed great. Let's hear from him, Robert. Thank you. He's speaking to Ed Robinson. Well, Lee, how difficult is it losing like that? Uh, it's really disappointing. It's nasty. I, just, I don't know what to do with myself now. I feel bad. I just got caught cold, didn't I? Is that what went wrong? Yeah, I was actually the shot and I was fucking... I was trying to get my head back together. And he just he got fast hands in and just kept swarming me. And then the ref stopped it. I wish they hadn't stopped it. You thought the referee shouldn't have stopped the fight then? No, I was all right. Did you always feel in control of the fight up until then? Yeah, all definitely in control. I was, I was strong. He's a strong lad, though, but I was stronger than him. And if time I hit him, I could hear I was hurting him. That second round when you scored the knockdown, you must have thought it was over then? Yeah, yeah, I did, yeah. He's got a, he's got a really good tune, definitely. Yeah. So where do you go from here, Lee? I think I'm going back down to Light Welter. So I'd better watch out down there. Unlucky tonight. All right, thanks. They'll be watching out whichever way he goes from here. Robert, why was he able to put Anderson almost out of the fight inside the first couple of rounds? He was kind of doing something very clever, Motley. He was showing him the left hook, showing him a left uppercut, and then he was teeing off with the left hook, and Anderson was standing in front of him and just kept getting caught with it. Was Anderson slightly guilty of perhaps underestimating or not preparing for that? I just think he needed to keep his right hand up higher. I mean, it's easy for us to say, because the left hook is a terrific shot, Muttley throws, but um, he should have glued it to his ear after the first one put him over. Didn't happen like that, did it? No, because I think the left hooks were having an effect on Anderson and hurting him. His legs were all over the place at one stage. We, up here, we, it looked for a moment like he wouldn't actually make the count, but he did. And then Anderson found himself in even more bother by the fourth round. Well, he got the cut in the fourth, he'd been knocked down heavy in the second, and his legs had, had stiffened a few times. And to come back from where he came back is just, you know, some credit to him. Benny King in the corner working overtime, not for the first time, to keep him in it. And yet, way up through the middle part of the fight, you could not see any other outcome, could you, Robert? You just couldn't see a way back. Um, we did think the strength might come into it and size as it went on, but the damage Muttley had done with his boxing and his hooks, you thought the fight was over by the halfway stage and, it, and he'd stop him late on. Will young Muttley look back on it afterwards and think to himself, you know, I did invite my opponent back into it. This is championship boxing and you can never do that. Yeah, you can never switch off for a second. Do you, you think got... he did? Maybe, he maybe lost concentration. Because it had on. swung back Anderson's way by the 10th, had it not? I think he'd done that much work, Muttley, that he was entitled to a couple of, a couple of rounds of just moving about and, and trying to stay out of the way. But un unluckily for him, he got caught and he never recovered his senses. Do you agree with what he told us afterwards, speaking to Ed Robinson, that it, it, even now it was a premature stoppage? Well, I'm not so sure. I just think, you know... Phil Edwards it, gave him every chance. Yeah, sure. he gave him every chance, but I think the time, when he actually stopped it, I think, to be fair to Muttley, I wouldn't have stopped it at that point. I'd have given him another 10 seconds, Would I have you? to be honest. Yeah, definitely. Why is that? Because I just think when he, when he goes back to the ropes where the stoppage is made, he's almost throwing a punch back. He's kind of looking at the ref as if to say, don't stop it. And I, and I think he was hurt more about 20 seconds earlier. What does it say about Anderson? You know, he showed plenty of bad habits. He was all over the place. He finds a way to do it. What does that tell you? What it tells you is he's extremely fit, determined, and he completely believes in himself. And to come back from where he came back is, is, is just unbelievable, really. He keeps surprising us this young man doesn't he and it, I, I mentioned young he is still only 23 yeah he's 23 I remember watching him in the Commonwealth Games he's uh he's just come on and on and on but to come back tonight I mean I have to mention Muttley again because it was Muttley's fight and to be sitting here thinking that Muttley lost is, is, is beyond belief really because for me Muttley was dominating he was well ahead and he was hurting Anderson all through the fight it was a gamble in every sense that's paid off here coming to Birmingham away from home putting it all on the line and they're going home dual champions a little more action before we close at Welterweight here tonight, featuring Craig Dixon, the man Anderson beat last time out. He returned in this one here against a local opponent, Darren Gethin. Only one stoppage defeat on his slate. Six rounds, here is the last of them. Craig Dixon in the silver. And then you see the card, yep, I have Gethin one point up, and I'm sure Dixon's shocked, I'm sure these corner are shocked. Right. Right now, Can he close the show right. here? Darren Gethin, or will Dixon have an answer? She was certainly not in the free fight script, but then nobody knew the kind of intensity that Gethin was going to bring to the ring. 
Except him. And his trainer, maybe. Phil Dixon's been told to grind it out, and that's what he's doing here. Full credit, he's still using the, the, the body shots to try and take what Geffen has left out of him. But what a struggle this has been for Dixon all the way through. Just the sheer intensity of Geffen is making this such a hard night's work for Dixon. And once or twice, he struggled to match it, as here. Punches, they're not strong, but the knuckle, they're not slaps, he's getting the knuckle home. So there's no complaints about any inside the glove stuff, and that was a solid left hook. He still seems to be the one with that little bit more energy. Sean Messer, by the way, is the referee here with the scorecard in his pocket. Same the left hook, and then the jab from Kevin. He's just getting outworked in this contest. For us, anyway, Craig Dixon. So often the way with these undercard fighters and the guys who are not in the uh, house corner that they don't get it when they deserve it. I mean, that's a full half minute almost, and uh, Dixon had thrown nothing. OK, he wasn't taking what you would call quality shots, but he's been outworked again. And if you ask yourself, who do you think deserves to win this one? I think you have to say, Devin Geffen. The gum shield's come out here. Yeah, Ge Geffen's gum shield's come out, yep. yeah. So a little lull in the action in the final round. Geffen's still the one prepared to set the pace, just grind that little bit harder. Well, it's been 115 mile an hour performance from him here, isn't it? Well, the big difference, he came in here tonight expecting a tough battle. He was prepared for it, he's accepted it, and he's got on with the job, and he's still out working, Dixon. Looking for the win of his career so far, Darren Geffen here. It's all over, and Geffen does get the win that he definitely deserved. That is a big setback for Craig Dixon, who did so well, challenging for the Commonwealth Welterweight title last time. But Darren Gethin follows up his win a fortnight ago with a much, much bigger win here. Only the sixth of his 18-fight career, but what a win, and he will feel that he could go on from there. It was a terrific performance from him. Yeah, but now a lesson for Craig Dixon, you can't come into the ring here unless you're probably uh, pr properly prepared for the job. He wasn't tonight, and he's paid the penalty, and that's a big, big dent to his reputation. Ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds of boxing, referee Sean Messer has scored this contest for Dixon, 56 points, for Geffen, 58 points. Your winner from Warsaw, Darren Geffen. That's and about the way Jim and I had it. Four rounds to two for Geffen. What a win for him. What a setback for Dixon. Got to credit the winner, though, don't we, rather than the man who's made it two defeats in a row? Of course you have. Geffen just kept on working. He wanted the win. I don't think Dixon was in the best of shape, to be honest, but um, not taking nothing away from Geffen. He outworked him and he wanted the win. Sad lesson learned there. Just one further reminder, the big one coming this weekend. It's Diego Corrales against Jose Luis Castillo, and it's live Sunday morning at 2 a.m. on Sky Sports 1. Replays 7.30 in the morning on 1, and again at 10.30 on Sky Sports 2. Final word on what we might expect from Adam Smith. Well, Paul, there's 105 fights and 80 knockouts between them against only 10 defeats. Both Jose Luis Castillo and Diego Corrales have been world-class fighters for years. But with them, it just comes down to what happens in their third meeting. Tactics are so very important. Corrales knows two ways. He can elect to box and use his speed and skills but he can also be drawn in to trench warfare. Castillo, in the typical Mexican style, knows really only one way, persistent, dogged determination and aggression, looking for his favoured left hook. Joe Goosen, Diego Corrales' trainer, was telling us he wants his man to box his way home to a decision. But will Castillo allow him to do that? He promises he will knock out Corrales in six rounds. 
I guess the big question is whether heads or hearts rule the day and win the ultimate battle. Either way, it's sure to be a classic, and we have seen a classic of sorts in Birmingham here tonight. Robert McCracken, thank you very much for being with us, and congratulations, Robert, also on all your recent successes as a trainer. What a night, and what a win for Kevin Anderson. Ladies and gentlemen, in the green corner, in the yellow corner. Boxing on Sky Sports in association with StansPoker.com.